What's going on, people? Mike C Town. Um, finally back with another uh, edition of the Vinyl Shit. Uh, sorry, it's been a while. Um, I've been really busy with all kinds of shit going on um, with my life and with uh, Dead and Hip Hop. So my time has been pretty much consumed. Um, but today I'm actually at home, and if you can't tell, I'm extremely sick. Um, I have an ear infection, an upper respiratory infection, and pharyngitis. So I took the day off of work, and since I can't really do shit but lay around and feel sorry for myself, I figure, hey, why not do a vinyl video? Since I'm on antibiotics, I'm going to be doing this one sober, since what I hear you're not supposed to drink when you're on those antibiotic things. So um, we'll see how that goes, huh? So last time we ended on my Ozzy Osbourne collection, and this time we're going to start with this this is Paul Collins beat otherwise known as the beat um, this is great LA power pop from 1979 um, this features Paul Collins from the band the nerves who um, <clears throat> I'm sure you've heard of the nerves hopefully uh, at the very least you know the song hanging on the telephone that Blondie covered you know hanging on the telephone that's that pharyngitis type singing, bruh. Hey, man, that shit, you ain't born with that. That comes with lots of snot and built-up mucus and pus and all kinds of other good shit built up behind your uh, your throat and your nose. Anyway, um, yeah, if you're a fan of the knack or the jam or the nerves, of course, then you'll like you'll like the, the beat. So um, if you can find this, it's a pretty pretty great album classic album if you can find this around town um, definitely pick it up man great debut great harmonies um, great songs great love songs you know just a, a, a fun album so give this a shot the next record I'm gonna show you this is another Paul Collins beat album this is um, the kids are the same um, this is their second album a little more upbeat in my opinion um, weird almost Beatles ish sounding record um, you know, this is the kind of happy music I can deal with, you know, um, just just fun, upbeat, more punkish music. But yeah, this is a, a great record, you know, and the kids are the same and the kids are the same and the kids are the same. So if you're into power pop or just old school punk rock like Buzz Cox-ish era, then, um, you know, definitely give this this band a shot. Next record I'm going to show you, this is Johnny Paycheck. She's all I got. This is awesome, classic Rebel Country from 1971. If you're not familiar with, with Johnny Paycheck, you know, this era of Johnny Paycheck, he's a little more clean compared to his later self. Um, this era sounded more like uh, George Jones. He was, he was a little more tame trying to sing his songs more, but I could see, you know, this also appealed to fans of like, you know, David Allen Coe at the time or, or you know, even Merle. Some great songs on here, of course, you know, I said, friend, don't take her, she's all I've got. It also had the, the haters anthem, uh, He Will Break Your Heart. He don't love you like I love you. While I do like that song, that's some, that's definitely some hater shit, isn't it? Sound like some shit that Drake would write. Um, I should send that to him, see if he'll do a cover. Next record I'm going to show you, this is Johnny Paycheck's Take This Job and Shove It. Probably his biggest album, um, I would be willing to say. Mainly from the song Take This Job and Shove It, which of course you guys know was a David Allen Coe song. Um, I can't sit here and say whose version is better because they sound so fucking similar. There's not really that much of a difference. Definitely the best cover was by the Dead Kennedys, but um, that's another story. It's a great collection of songs. Most are covers. Um, but he always puts a nice spin on the songs that he covers. He always puts a smile on my face, man, just because I always picture a smile on his face when he's when he's playing these songs and singing these songs. Kind of like that. See that, 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 that grin? Not like that, where he looks like he's going to fuck you up just for looking his way. But, you know, I get that in my head whenever I hear Johnny Paycheck. And uh, like I was saying earlier, yeah, he uh, definitely went from that to that, you know, and on to the next record, which is that. Um, this is Johnny Paycheck's Armed and Dane Armed and Crazy, excuse me, Armed and Crazy. Um, Armed and Dangerous was uh, 
Anthrax, I think, right? Anyway, I love the first song, Friend, Lover, Wife. You know, that's some of my, my favorite lyrics. Uh, if you don't know my woman, you might think she's a square, but you always see that woman when she lets down her hair. It really reminds me of my girlfriend. A lot of people think she's a square, but I don't know, but her hair is always down, and they still think she's a square, but I don't. It does have some of my favorite songs, like Me and the IRS, which is a, a, a great song. Um, you know, it's hard to keep my hand on my woman when Uncle Sam's got his hand in my pants. Love that shit, man. One of my other favorite songs on here, um, Outlaw's Prayer, um, which, no, seriously, this is a really good critique on organized religion. You know, it talks about him going to church and the guy won't let him in because he has long hair and a beard. And he's he's going on talking about how, you know, what does that matter if all I want to do is go inside and pray like the rest of you? And then he goes on to talk about how John the Baptist and Jesus himself, in these pictures at least that we've seen, um, have the long hair and the beard. So what's the difference between how they looked and how I look? I think, it, I don't know, I think it's really an interesting perspective. But um, but yeah, this is a, a, a great record. And um, yeah, I think you should definitely... Pick this up if you ever see a copy out for a good price. This, in my opinion, Lovers and Losers by Johnny Paycheck. This is one of his better records, in my opinion. It, it has a lot of that really classic uh, Rebel Country sound, even more so than some of his earlier records. I think if you're not familiar with Johnny Paycheck, this is a great place to start because it has some fantastic songs on there. Um, it starts off on fire with DOA, Drunk on Arrival. Drunk on Arrival, three sheets to the wind. Ain't no mistake in the state that I'm in. But yeah, this is fantastic stuff. Um, if you see it, pick it up. Um, next record I'm going to show you, this is um, Pentangle. This is a maid that's deep in love. <clears throat> um... I'm not a huge, huge, huge Pentangle fan. That's why I only have this one record. I have a few other CDs, but this is the only thing I have on vinyl. Um, they're a decently cool uh, folk band. Of course, I prefer bands like Incredible String Band or Dando Shaft, um, you know, to, to stuff like this. Um, I think one of my main issues was I was never much of a fan of Jackie McShee's vocals. She sounds really annoying to me sometimes. Um, I prefer Bird Janch over her. They're old school um, folk. They kind of mix some jazz elements in there. This record, though, is just kind of a collection of tracks from other albums. But if you've never heard them, it's a fine place to start. There's some original tracks as well as some traditional folk tracks that they're covering. So, you know, give it a shot if you're curious. Next record I'm going to show you, this is uh, Pep Love's Crooked angels this is um a single from his at the time upcoming album ascension which ascension is super dope so um pep love is a member of the hieroglyphics crew in my opinion one of the more underrated mcs from the hieroglyphics crew um he has the super smooth ass flow and a voice perfectly made for hip-hop but um but yeah this is Two songs from that from that LP, uh, Crooked Angels and um, Act Phenom. But yeah, both tracks are really dope. Um, fuck that, man. If you can find Ascension on Wax, definitely pick it up. Trust me, it's a great, great album, especially if you're a fan of, uh, of Hyro. You'll like it. Next record I'm going to show you, this is uh, Perfume Genius Learning. This is some amazing music right here um sad and just haunting music just gorgeous gorgeous piano playing and these just amazingly frail vocals um you know he's one of those singers who who's able to portray such emotion with his music like you really feel what he's saying and it's almost like you're hearing him reading from his personal diary Picture like a more stripped down Antony with less extra instrumentation um, and you might have an idea of Perfume Genius. His album, um, Put Your Back Into It, was one of my favorite albums of 2012 um, and I don't have it on vinyl. I actually did buy it on vinyl but I got kind of dicked over by somebody on Discogs so I doubt you're seeing this but if you are, Mr. 
Dick Mike Town over for Put Your Back Into It guy from Discogs. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. I hope your girlfriend catches worms and it spreads into your penis hole and they crawl up in there and then they go into your throat and they come out of your mouth and then go back into your mouth and then do other more disgusting things in the back of your throat like poop worm poop down the back of your throat. I'm sorry but I'm sick so that's that's really all I could come up with. Next record I'm gonna show you this is the band Phosphorescent. Um, this is the album Two Willie. Um, one of my really, 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 really good friends plays piano in this group, Mr. Scott Stapleton. And, um, oh man, I, I remember seeing Matt, the, uh, the main songwriter for these guys. I remember seeing him play around Athens acoustic and just thinking, man, it's not my thing, although I can kind of see this taking off. But, um, I'm not sure what I was thinking, man. When I look back now and listen to some of his old records, they're fucking great. I feel like he was great then, and he only got better when he got um, My Friends in Virgin Forest to be his backing band. This record in particular, this is their version of Willie Nelson songs. They don't just cover the Willie songs, they, and they really do a great job making them their own. If you're a fan of Willie Nelson and you're a fan of Phosphorescent, or either one, if you're a fan of Willie and never heard phosphorescent whatever just you know give this record a shot i think you you're, you'd enjoy it if you're a fan of americana in general you know um give this a shot this is the back pretty cool mr matt out in the water drinking some some beer you know what i'm saying it's cool dude next record i'm going to show you this is another phosphorescent record called here's to taking it easy this is a really great americana album um if you're a fan of uh I don't know, Wilco, or uh, Whiskey Town, or I don't know, even Handsome Family, or something like that, then um, then I think you should give this a shot, you know, um, great instrumentation, whether it's stripped down, almost folkish songs, or one of the more lushly produced tracks, I think all of the songs are just really well written, and really well played. You motherfuckers know what this is, man. Um, this is Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. This is my favorite Pink Floyd album. Um, just the lush instrumentation there's just so many layers to the songs every time you hear it you hear more little subtle things in there it's great call it cliche I don't fucking care but I just think this is great avant-garde rock I, I remember seeing an article saying that they were one of the most uh, uh, overhyped rock bands of all time you're fucking crazy, man. You're fucking crazy. Listen to Brain Damage together with Eclipse with an open mind and tell me you don't hear genius there. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. A nice gatefold album. Um, I bought this for like $2 um, at a pawn shop, apparently, where uh, Miss Kathy Kajolis sold it. She wrote her fucking name inside, which I, I have a, quite a few records where people wrote their names in there. And it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? It's like people who write their name on their underwear. Who the fuck wants your underwear? And the people that want your vinyl, like, why would you write your name in it? Like, it's just, I don't know, man. People are fucking weird, dude. Next record, I'm going to show you guys. Um, you know what this is, too. Um, this is The Wall. Uh, let me show you the vinyl before I actually start talking about this shit. Um, but yeah, this is a super awesome gatefold record, um, double record, excuse me. I remember in high school going to see the movie The Wall. I didn't know anything about Pink Floyd, um, and I knew nothing about the movie. I just went because a bunch of my skater friends wanted to go see it. Um, everyone I was with was high. You know, I was not, of course, because I was straight edge then, and... I didn't get this movie one single fucking bit. All I remember thinking was, I am so uncomfortable because I'm the only black person in this entire movie theater, and I remember all the imagery on there. I thought that it was a bunch of Nazi shit, so uh, the first thing I'm thinking is, man, this Pink Floyd band, they're a fucking, they're fucking racist, man. For, for years to come after that. I associated Pink Floyd with 
racism and Nazism, which is just <laughs> ridiculous. But um, anyway, I'm glad I got over that because this is a fantastic album and Pink Floyd is a fantastic band. There's just great songs on this. Um, you know, whatever. Pick it up if you see it. I'm sure you, most of you guys who collect vinyl, you already have this. It's like one of those records that's like essential. This and like Led Zeppelin. That goes in everybody's vinyl collection, you know. Let's talk metal. This is Portal Outra. Um, this is the first album I heard by these guys. I never heard anything like this. You know, it was black metal production with brutal death metal. Something that didn't make any sense until I heard it. It's the most disgusting sounding music. You know, this sounds way more evil than the majority of black metal bands I hear nowadays. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that Satan had some kind of part in this. Whether he was a producer, whether he was a drum technician, he did something with this band. I actually bought this from my homeboy, um, Justin, who has a distro, which I'll put the link to the distro in the... Um, in the description here but um so this is a gatefold gatefold album right check that shit out really fucking cool right but oh we're not done we're not done we're not done check this out it's actually a picture disc how awesome is that right fucking amazing but yeah this record is fantastic fantastic um you know you've probably already heard these guys but um let me give a shout out to my man justin he's in the band called father befouled if you like portal give father befouled a listen i think you'd really really like them they're fucking super rad brutal black metal ish death metal good stuff good stuff next record i'm going to show you this is portal vex avoid this is their newest release Continues on the same path of that incantation worship, super muddy, disgusting, gross black metal with just those nasty guttural vocals. Um, maybe just a little bit more atmospheric than their previous albums. Um, it has these weird, drawn out, spooky parts that just make you cringe and just go, ugh. This next record I'm going to show you is Post Hume by Posthume, atmospheric Norwegian black metal. Um, they're less on the aggressive side like other Norwegian black metal bands and more on the almost um, ambient-ish side. Uh, I, I almost don't like the term atmospheric black metal because I feel like all black metal is to a point atmospheric, but I think with this, um, they just put more sounds in there in the background. It's very melancholic. Um, they have these mesmerizing guitars with these super hypnotizing riffs, you know. Um, they have a great way of writing these riffs that use what I believe is like traditionally happy chords, but they play them in a way that makes them sound really gloomy. Um, but yeah, they're one of the lesser known black metal bands, but I think they're one of the better black metal bands. The cover has the trees more of the trees and then the inside has that there um you know one thing i've always loved about black metal is these bands have such a great way of making you feel a certain way with the music that they write and when you have artwork like this i feel like it 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 adds to the feeling you know you really get a a, a sense of what these guys are going for when you listen to this album and you see the artwork you feel a sense of being in the woods, dark, alone, you know? Yeah, give give these guys a shot if you're into black metal, all right? So that's it for this edition of the Vinyl Shit. Um, sorry if it was a little uh, somber due to my sickness, but um, I'll be back hopefully next week nice and soused and talking about some uh, some other records. So, as always, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, leave me some comments, share me to your friends, subscribe, all that good shit, man. Alright? Peace, bitches.